Hello everyone. Uh, I want to do this short little video tutorial um, just to remind you about setting up the in Illustrator for your vector project, how to appropriately set up your file and layer. So here's a work in progress. Um, most of you have already set up your template, placed your template, locked it, and then just to show you, make it visible, here is what a stu former student did with the outline mode. Notice that there's good clean lines. If we zoom in, you may want to check before we copy this layer. Make sure that all thing, all the uh, anchor points or the what's called the tangents where things uh, converge, <clears throat> excuse me, lines converge, are correct. If you need to fix anything. Um, Remember the direct select tool will work fine in that, um, but it looks like things are clean and nice sharp geometric lines. So I'll zoom out. Again, we can keep this visible if you want to, but basically I'll hide the template layer. So to duplicate for the next step, again, most of the work, the bulk of the work on this project is what you see here. Uh, if you've successfully, and that's the first thing to do, of course, and just name it line. And then to duplicate that layer, just simply click on the little flyout button, the layers panel, duplicate line. It makes a copy. Double click on it and just rename it, uh, and we'll call this one uh, contrast. Okay. And of course, it just literally made a copy of everything. So when I make this, when I lock the line layer and make it invisible, now that I'm working on the contrast layer, for instance, I can say, start thinking about, again, what are areas that you could do stuff like this, right? You can make the fill, you decide what is filled in solid. And I'm just, as I'm saying, as you can see, I'm experimenting here a bit. Always look back at your reference photograph if you need to for some guidance kind of on this, but I'm just going to do a few things here for sake of this demo to show you where, again, these are closed paths. The just student did a good job and paid attention, took my advice that I initially gave you all before spring break. In think about every, to make everything work, you want to always have closed paths so that when you do fills, that they fill from beginning anchor point to ending anchor point, okay? So now you can see that, uh, like for this door right here, well, it's not really a door, that's, yeah, it is. Um, uh, again, that might, that's probably a case where because there's a, handle here, we need to fill that white and then in the case, you know, either arrange, send to front, bring to back. There's not one on this door back here. Maybe that I decide to fill that little curb area like so. And it might be as simple as just, in this case, somewhat randomly fill, select ones of these paths because essentially, if you look at the original photograph, you can kind of see that they're really just architectural details. That one might, I don't know. You may want to try, and it's perfectly okay, on the second version, this icon, uh, this, this contrast version is to use grayscales if you prefer. Here's another case where probably, well, nah, I don't know about that. We'll undo that. Um, I might instead decide to fill these things. So I could do, you know, shift click every other one or shift click all of them to add to the selection. So you can kind of, kind of take your time. But all the, all the while, think about, again, something like this. You might want to try, this is kind of a classic case where you might want to try a checkerboard pattern even if the original structure does not necessarily have that feature. I mean, this is where you can have sort of artistic license, okay? But you sort of get the idea, I hope. 
Um, again, think about what needs to be uh, darker values, lighter values, medium values, and so forth. But again, keep everything in black and white. Okay. Uh, then, finally, um, we can be on that layer and do the same, the final, duplicate that layer. Okay. And here we'll call this literally pictogram because the idea there, we'll lock that so nothing happens to our layers already. The pictogram layer then, we want to actually go in and that's got the most, uh, should have the most stylized. In this case, I'm going to put a white stroke on that just to delineate the edges. And then really, really, you can simplify a lot of things. Like you could drop out several of these paths, just delete them because you're, all you're doing is deleting them from this layer, not from the ones underneath. And uh, that might need to be filled there to sort of make sense. Okay, like so. Again, less is more with the pictogram, so I might merely do every other one of these little details and then actually just delete the other ones, okay? If you can get by with that, then that's fine. It's just merely you want the suggestion of the building and its architectural attributes. Also the same if you're not doing a building, you happen to be doing either a, you know, a watch or some kind of power tool or appliance or whatever. Just make careful, conscious decisions of what you're going to fill and what needs to stay you know, open, that sort of thing. Here's a case where, again, I'll put a white outline stroke on it. And in this case, again, we don't need all of these, only a few. I might actually just move this one over and fill it like I filled the other ones, and then get rid of these down here. Again, keep it simple, keep it simple. Even these lines right here, you only probably need half as many, or even a third as many as started out there. But you see, even with what I've removed from the original, the essence of the building is there. Um, and you want to think about, actually, there's a couple more that I'll delete that really are just too, too much, right? Um, might want to make, again, might probably want to put a white outline stroke on that if I do that sort of thing. Um, again, here, probably, instead of grayscale, you really want this to be just straight up black and white only. And then, of course, you can go in and, in this case, I'll make these white now so that, oh, missed one, um, and arrange them to where they're to the front, okay? But now let's look at our layers. One at a time, we've got the line view, which the student started out with. Then we get moved to a little more high contrast. And then finally, more simplified. I could even simplify this further. You just want to think about the pictogram by definition as really something that you could use as um, a logo, like literally an icon um, that represents the, build, the essence of the building. So there's still a whole lot of detail I could actually delete, and that would be perfectly fine. So it's, you know, don't delete everything, obviously, but leave enough detail that the sort of arch architectural features and integrity of the building, if you're doing a building or whatever subject you're doing, is recognizable still, okay? Um, that's the gist of the file setup, and uh, good luck.